In this video, I will explain how to use the correct distance for the profile calculation. It is very important you use the correct distance because if you don't, then your profile calculation will be off and subsequently what you do with the autopilot will be wrong also and you might get a high or low on profile. So there are different ways to get a distance for your profile calculation. The easiest way is to use the distance from the FMS here on the MCD we see the distance on the flight plan page but it's, this is not always correct if you're getting radar vectors or you, you're expecting a shortcut that distance will not be correct another source of distance will be the distance to the VOR and um, the distance to the threshold from the uh, ILS the ILS DME and one other place you can get the distance to the threshold is the progress page if you put the waypoint of the runway threshold in there which will be should be the same as the distance from the uh, to the ILS here okay now if you are expecting a, a shortcut from a certain waypoint to another waypoint for example from Delta November 368 to Traco what you can also do is subtract the legs which will be missing so uh, usually we don't know exactly um, where we get a shortcut but if ATC tells you expect a shortcut from in this case Delta November 368 to Traco then you can look at the, the star chart and look at the distance between the legs which will not be flown so in this case this leg there and this leg there will not be flown but this leg will be flown now on the chart it says that the distance between these waypoints is 10 miles so times two this will make uh, 20 miles and if you then uh, take the distance from the FMS you subtract 20 miles and that is the actual distance what you will fly if you get a shortcut from Delta November 368 to Traco in this case so that's another way to figure out what your expected distance will be <laughs> okay so um, one other thing to keep in mind if you use the VOR for a distance is this that distance is from the present position of the aircraft right here to the VOR but this is also not what you will fly what you will fly is something more like uh, to one of these waypoints here on the approach and then follow the approach track down to the runway um, so whatever the distance from the VOR is you have to add some miles to get a more realistic distance if you get if you expect a shortcut to one of these waypoints here now how much is a bit hard to say but you can just estimate it usually about 10 miles or so is a realistic number if you're coming in for a sort of a straight in approach like this slightly off offset okay so let's run the video a bit and see what kind of shortcut we will get okay oh we we got a shortcut to Traco instead so that is not what we expected so what we can do now for now the distance on the FMS will be somewhat more realistic so at the moment it's 52 miles so we could use uh, 50 miles or round it down and use that for our profile calculation now one thing to keep in mind is that you might get another shortcut this is not too uncommon so depending on the traffic so at the moment there's no traffic here and so we might get another shortcut from Traco to Tamla now again it's, it's a bit hard to see exactly what the difference in track will be but you could add up you, know, you could do you add up these, these distances here and do some maths to figure out exactly what the distance from Traco to uh, Tamla is but um, that is not required you can just estimate it instead this will be close enough for the purpose of profile calculation so if at the moment the distance to go is uh, 48 miles then obviously this will be less than that and then you can just estimate something like let's say five miles less um, so using that distance if you still expect a shortcut so at the moment it's a 46 miles and so let's make that uh, 45 miles so at the moment it's 45 miles so subtract five miles for the shortcut so it'll be 40 miles and so then you would use 40 miles for your profile calculation okay so let's skip ahead a bit more and here is our right there there's our actual shortcut so now again the FMS distance will be correct so at the moment it says 32 miles so we'll round it down to 30 miles and when the distance flips from 31 to 30 exactly then we check our altitude and see if we're high or low on profile so this is one way to 
figure out what the distance to land will be. Now, there's another way, uh, which I will show in another video. So here's the other video, and this is a uh, VOR approach, but the uh, principle remains the same. So at the moment we're getting some radar vectors, and anytime you're getting radar vectors, you have to make sure that your flight plan is sequenced. That means that the active waypoint is not um, behind you or, or somewhere to the side. Uh, it, it should be the waypoint, which will be the next waypoint you will be crossing. Okay, so at the moment the Bunvi looks like the first waypoint we should be crossing, and this is indeed the active waypoint. And um, if you're getting radar vectors, depending where you are, it could also be useful to extend the um, approach track outwards. Okay, um, anytime you have extended the approach track outwards like this, then um, or any other situation actually is the same. Um, the, the distance from the uh, present position to the runway is uh, calculated by the FMS here uh, where it shows the distance. Uh, so um, what, what does that mean? It means that from your present position to the first active waypoint, so from here to there, that is where the distance comes from on the, on the FMS seen right there but this is also not exactly what you will fly because at the moment we're flying a heading of 360 so we're, we're gonna intercept the um, the approach somewhere here or maybe later we get another heading and we might intercept it somewhere there but we definitely not go from our present position straight to boon v so the actual distance we will fly will be more than is indicated on the fms here now how much more again there's no way to know exactly how much it is but you can just using a little bit of logic and common sense sort of figure out and make an estimate so um at the moment we have um 10, just, just under 10 miles to go to uh, intercept the track here and um, if you see okay the distance from here to there and there to there how much so what will be the, the amount of miles being flown more this is actually not that much more this, is, this should only be a couple of miles more so you can just add maybe two or three miles or so to account track the distance so we're not flying from here to Boonvi but instead from somewhere to there from here to there, from there to there to Boonfi, so the distance the, it will be slightly more. So that's one way to do that. Okay, so let's uh, skip ahead a bit and see what happens. So here we get a heading of 360, and uh, I must say that uh, if you, as long as you're not too far away, it actually it may, doesn't make that much difference in the profit calculation either if you would just use the distance uh, as indicated here. So uh, because the the, the difference is not that much <coughs> but again it, it depends on the situation so okay so let's skip ahead again uh, so we're flying and now we got another heading so 2030 so now uh, the distance to landing will actually be not that much different anymore uh, compared to the distance to from our present position to Boonvi so that's 33 miles and maybe we get one mile one mile or so more out of that because we're intercepting from here so if you would use um, just the FMS distance here that would work just fine because <coughs> uh, one mile is only 300 feet so that really doesn't make, make that much difference at the end okay uh, one other thing though as soon as you um, arm nav provided that there's a valid nav intercept then the aircraft will uh, draw a line from the present position to the uh, point where it will intercept the track and at that moment the distance on the FMS will actually be, actually be exactly what you will fly so if you would push nav here or in this case it's a VOR approach so you can arm the approach if you do it, um, a managed approach and then nav will be blue it will draw a line exactly to the intercept point there we go so now nav is blue if you wait a bit the aircraft will draw a line there it goes so and now it draws an intercept line and now the distance distance on the uh, fms will be exactly what you'll be flying okay so there's one other situation which requires a little bit of a different method to figure out what the distance is to land which we'll have a look at now okay so this is a, an approach where we uh, come in from the other side of the airport so on the fms there's quite a long arrival track here 
and if you would be actually flying that track then the distance on the FMS uh, will be correct. But don't forget there could be altitude uh, restrictions on the star which is the case in this case and um, so just because the distance tells you one thing doesn't mean that you will, uh, for example, if according to the distance you are high, that you will have to fly uh, lower in profile or vice versa, because you will still have to fly these restrictions unless A to C uh, tells you to cancel it. Okay, so in this case, if we ex if I go back a little bit, uh, if we expect a shortcut here, then you can't use the VOR distance because the VOR distance is from the present position straight to the VOR and this, this is not what we'll be flying we'll be at the very least flying somewhere on downwind here and then fly a base maybe to Sokan on this waypoint here and that's the po shortest possible track we can fly so we, we definitely uh, cannot fly straight to the VOR obviously and so this distance will be not usable at the moment so what we can do then okay so uh, if you for example expect a shortcut from the from Van Lee here to Sokan, you could uh, look at the chart and then see what the uh, what the difference in distance is. So you could add up all the distance distances here and then figure out what then the actual distance will be. Or perhaps you can add up the, these distances here, these legs, and um, and then just look at the display what the distance is from Van Lee to Sokan. You can uh, use your thumb and index finger. Um, that looks very um, simple way to do that but it actually works quite well so you put your fingers on these waypoints and then move it to the center here and then you can see uh, more or less what what the distance is um, and then the distance from the present position to the next active waypoint and then you can add up all those distances and then figure out what the total distance to land will be that is one way to do it <laughs> what you can also do which uh, in this case usually works a bit better is to use to, to uh, use the uh, range arcs here and then add up to some uh, estimated uh, distances uh, using these range arcs so for in this case uh, if you would go direct to Vanli and then to Sokan then um, the distance from present pushes to Vanli is just under 40 miles and then to so from Vanli to Sokan you can look on um, on the display uh, more or less how, how far that is about 25 miles and then the distance from Sokan to the threshold you can check this on the, the approach chart which is 15 miles in this case so you can then add up all these distances and figure out how many track miles you have okay so let's skip ahead a bit and see what happens so now we're getting a shortcut to this uh, waypoint here now you might think that okay so uh, and now the distance on the FMS 84 mile 84 miles at the moment that must be the correct distance however um, don't forget that you can get uh, another shortcut later on because if you skip ahead a bit more here that it, it doesn't look like a very logical path you'll be flying um, because if Sokan is at 15 miles why would you go that far uh, and then and then take a turn if there's no traffic here you might as well go from here or so to Sokan which is exactly what happens later uh, also this uh, this situation here is still valid in the case you will be getting radar vectors um, even though we have a, uh, an actual uh, path in a direct two now uh, if you would be getting radar vectors, the, the situation will still be the same because the distance you get from the FMS on the flight plan page here um, is actually uh, not correct. You cannot use this. So if you would be getting radar vectors, the, that would be the same situation. You cannot use the distance on the uh, flight plan page, and so you will have to figure it out yourself. So, okay, so how many miles uh, would we have in this uh, case? Well, again, that depends uh, where you would get the shortcut, but we can just estimate it. Uh, we get a bit more realistic situation than we had before so from the present position to this point here is uh, 20 miles and then if we want to uh, if we would get a, a shortcut direct to Sokan okay so how far is that so you place your fingers again on the display and you move it here and then you can say okay so from there to there is about uh, well let's make it 10 let's call it 10 miles okay so if the distance from Sokan to the threshold is 15 miles so 15 miles 10 miles and 20 miles you add them all up and then you know the uh, estimated distance to land okay so let's go a bit further 
and then get another shortcut here there we go so now we get our last shortcut and at the moment that would be um, the distance on the FMS will be correct now provided we do not get another shortcut to this waypoint here so now we can use 25 miles for our profile calculation and then figure out if we're high or low on energy and again like if you would fly here and you would get another if you would expect another shortcut to this waypoint you can use the same logic so we have uh, 23 miles at the moment and again we, we don't know exactly what the difference is from here to there versus uh, going by a socon but um, if you use um, let's say just a couple of miles that, that should do so we could use 20 miles instead here if we expect the shortcut direct to Tango Sierra 426 waypoint so that's it i hope uh, it's all clear and if if you have any questions please leave it in the comments below